On this episode of Me Eater, I head to the staked plains of the Texas Panhandle with a gang of buddies in order to hunt sandhill cranes, known affectionately as ribeye in the sky. In this country, skies are big, birds are beautiful, shoulders are sore, and grills are sizzling. I'm Steven Ranella. To me, hunting isn't only about the pursuit of an animal. It's about who we are and what we're made of. I live to hunt and hunt to live. I am a meat eater. The staked plains of the Texas Panhandle cover more ground than the state of Indiana. 150 years ago, this was a place where Comanche warriors preyed upon trespassing buffalo hide hunters who were working what was known then as the Great Southern Herd. Today, those grasslands have given way to fields of wheat, cotton, and sorghum, and the buffalo have been replaced by overwintering flocks of sandhill cranes. Numbering in the hundreds of thousands, they come here to take advantage of the crops and the shallow playa lakes. This wasn't a feeder, was it? No, it wasn't. <laughs> Wrong oh. angle. <laughs> Joining me is my pal, Ronnie Bame, a dog breeder that I've been hunting with for 25 years, who's a master in knocking birds out of the sky with a shotgun. We need some more decoys. Ronnie and I are guests of my friend, Ed Arnett, a biologist with the Theodore Roosevelt Conservation Partnership. When you can see the red on that head, then you know they're, then you know then you know they're in. <laughs> But the nitty gritty details of this hunt have been hammered out by Ed's buddy and fellow biologist, Mike Panassi, who practically lives off of crane meat, procured through the use of what he refers to as stuffer decoys. Those are real crane hides stuffed with wood and foam. Do you find that these just work far and way better when you, so you actually oh, skin this bird out. So much better. Me and one of my buddies came up with this design. But it's well, it's not really a design. I mean, it's a damn bird. Well, well true, but I mean, how to, how to make it? I it mean. looks like Northwestern School Taxidermy first year student. Yeah. <laughs> but they'll lock in on the decoys a half a mile away. And if they don't think anything's wrong, they might flo fly low enough with no intention of landing. And then you're just past you. Just past you. Yeah. yeah. Growing up in Michigan, we had sand hills around. There's no sand hill season. The first I ever heard of hunting sand hills was in Montana. You could apply for a tag and get a. Uh, Stan Hill Crane We're tag. allowed three a day in Texas. Hey, you haven't eaten them yet, all right? I've never eaten one. You've heard that, right? They call them ribeye. No, the no, rib yeah. that's another thing that piqued my interest. And also just looking at them. Yeah. I mean, it's a wild looking bird. Yep. You get a big one, and I mean, the breast is bigger than your hand. Is that right? It's, yeah, there's a lot of meat on them. If you gave it to somebody who never they wouldn't had know they were eating game, crane. you just said, here, here, you know, just, they just assume you put a piece of meat on the grill, they wouldn't know it was waterfowl. I'm excited, man. I'm glad no one's ever given me a piece of crane meat. I want to have this be the first time I ever try it. Well, we got to kill some first. <laughs> oh, I know, I know, I know. <laughs> More than any other kind of hunter, waterfowlers are driven by the notion of shooting a limit. That means you bagged your legal daily bag limit of birds, and to say you shot a limit is to say that you did everything perfectly, no mistakes. We're chasing that goal, and we get up early to do it. We're out in the field a couple hours before daybreak, digging blinds and placing stuffers, as well as synthetic body decoys. If you spook one group, you gotta wait for, you know, a half a mile of cranes to pass by before they calm down again. So they're just wary, wary. Very, yeah. yeah. After some frantic work, it's a tense collection of minutes as we wait to see whether or not the setup will draw the wary birds or repel them. We tend to some final details until we actually see birds flying on the horizon. There's the birds in the sky. <laughs> They're all going east. Uh -oh. yeah. To put it simply, those birds humiliate us. As do the next ones, and the next ones, and the next ones. They come in fine and dandy. Oh, shit. Right here, right here, right here, right here, right here. Right up to the point where you start giggling with excitement 
but then they put on the brakes and veer wildly to the sides. These birds are giving us the bird. Well, they're, they're high. <laughs> A little too high to do anything. All right, Debbie Downer. <laughs> Realistic. <laughs> After a few hours of watching cranes fly past out of shotgun range, we finally get the chance we've been waiting for. A flock makes a mistake. Coming in, coming in. We answer with our own set of mistakes. Oh, Come on. You gotta be kidding. Come on. How did we miss that? This one's coming back. Oh, oh. Yeah, I got this one. Oh, man. You gotta be what happened? That was, that was bad. That was embarrassing. Blame poor camouflage or poor communication between a gang of hunters spread too far apart or just plain crummy shooting, but it's embarrassing. No limits are happening here. But at least it's not a total snafu. Should we try it, Steve? Yeah. Ronnie and I drag one bird out of the sky. Nice shooting, boys. And Mike peels off another. First one of those I ever touched, Ronald. You shot. You hit it. Yeah. And I, I shot. Think, I think you hit it a little bit, too. You might get the little buyer's right remorse, are you, Steve? No, no, no. <laughs> opposite, yeah. man. I'm glad we didn't shoot a bunch of them on the first morning. <laughs> That's the dumbest thing I've ever heard of waterfowlers say in my life. If we'd have just knocked them dead this morning, it would be like nothing to look forward to. At this point, all that any of us can think or talk about is what we'll do different tomorrow. Our hopes for a limit still loom. The next morning, it's a new field, a new configuration, a new method of concealment. I still like think about those cranes that land in the spread, and you're like, hey, these cranes are all dead. This ain't right. First crane comes in and says, a lot of cotton seed left? <laughs> hey, hey, buddy, I'm talking to you. <laughs> Birds we got yesterday were like, very wary, kind of spooked, and it was pass shooting some high pass shooting. But here we got more options. There's a brushy ditch row back there. I'm gonna be able to lay down here and just pull this stuff over me like a blanket. And I think that we have a much better chance of actually having some cranes come in low like they're gonna set up. I would love to fool a crane and not just have a sky blast. But once we get our setup all dialed in to account for yesterday's errors, a thick fog rolls over, and it's like we're trying to hunt cranes with our eyes closed. The fog helps keep us hidden, sure, but it hides our decoys from the cranes and the cranes from us. All we can do is wait for it to clear and hope that the calls are enough to bring them in. God, every one of them is just praying, come on. Turn a little bit, turn. But then a large flock silently drops below the fog and our new location starts to pay off. Take them. Now the flocks are rolling in and the shots are rolling out. Dead. What did he say? <laughs> oh. Today we agree that we've smoothed out some rough spots in our plan, but we still got a ways to go for perfection. We fire up a portable grill for a crane hunter's field lunch. As we're loading up our birds, Ed notices that we've yep. shot a banded crane. 
Banned it twice. Okay, 65. Various wildlife organizations will ban migratory birds in order to track their movements and derive essential information for effective game management, a system that is reliant on hunter participation. The first step to reporting is determining who killed the bird, which is trickier than you might think. The only bird today that I was involved in wasn't this one. Well, Ed, we know it wasn't the one you shot because you were bragging up how you'd hit yours in the head. <laughs> I did. <laughs> so I had this one of, is not one of the first No, it's two. not one of no, those it could have been because no, I been. carried one back with me to the blind, and you brought it out to the field. Right. No, we can rule that one out because somebody said there's a banded bird, but yours was still sitting there. Ooh. Uh-huh. <laughs> Finally, I dial the 1-800-REPORTING hotline. Hello, this is the bird band report line. Do you have a bird band to report? Yes, ma'am. All right, sir. What is the band number? 788-46866. And do you know what kind of bird it was? Sandhill Crane. Do you know the nearest town? Lockney, like my knee that hurts. <laughs> you know what? I got one of those too, sir. And how was the bird obtained? Uh, by legal shooting, we're still arguing on Are who shot fine? the bird. <laughs> <laughs> okay. We're hoping you could tell us that from the band. Yeah. So what can you tell us about this bird? What I'm looking at right now, it looks like the bird you're recording was actually banded on 8-2 of 2002. Whoa. Oh, and, what? And it was in College, Alaska. Wow. So that's wonderful. <laughs> So this bird was banded 12 years ago in Alaska. I got all excited about a goose I shot. My first goose band, it was banded about 100 yards before I shot it. <laughs> <laughs> all right, and last but not least, we would like to send you a certificate of appreciation. Can we get your first and last name? And we can do two certificates. And our name. <laughs> this is going to be how, how many of those certificates do you got over there? Can we get four certificates for the same four bird? Quarter each. Actually, I can do up to four. Oh, so if sweet. you'd like to put all four of you on there, then we can most certainly do that. We're going to do one at a time, though, okay? All right. That'd be awesome. Our patient friend at the Bird Band Report Line takes down all of our info, and then it's time to get cooking. There's a lot of meat there. There's probably lots of ways you can cook crane, steam, but my favorite and the only way I ever cook them is just to breast them. Put a little olive oil on them, some seasonings, put them hot on the grill, hot and fast, heat them up. Pockers right up. Close the lid? Close the lid. That's a sweet sound. Looking good. Ready to give her a try? Yeah, cut it up. Cut's nice. Yep. You got like sawing at it with a serrated blade to try to get it open. Oh, that is nice, man. Come here, Slav, will you run? Tender bird, dude. Right now. They're all like everyone I've ever eaten. If you cook, really? if you cook them just like that, you bet. It's not like fowl. It's more like beef. Ribeye in the sky. You can spread that on toast, man. <laughs> Unbelievable. That's good, isn't it? Mm. That's really good. That is amazing. You would never guess that thing tastes like that. Nope. <laughs> the next morning, we return to the same spot. The fog comes right along with us. While we wait for the cranes to arrive, we obsess over concealment details in order to get everything just right. This has been a learning process for me, and I've picked up some valuable tips from Mike. It is a foggy ass morning. Can't see much, we can just hear cranes from like there, between there and there. This whole thing just sounds like cranes. They're on the ground somewhere. Look like the spirits of cranes descending from heaven rather than ascending, but like coming down out of the fog onto the ground out there. An hour past sunrise, and the cranes finally start heading our way. We hunker down. Oh, you see them? Yep, yep. Take them. 
Kill him, Ronnie! And just like that, bam, 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 we got three birds. The decoy spread and our minimalist but highly effective concealment plan seems to be working in our favor. What's that bird? They never made a peek. No, they couldn't have. That was just crazy. That was cool. They're fog-colored birds, too. Yeah. Right? Just come out of the fog like goats. This, finally, is the hunt we were chasing. The flocks come straight for our setup. No hesitation, no paranoid flyovers, no stratospheric circling. They are just pouring in, totally committed. Kill them! We've had three flights of cranes come in today, and it was right. I mean, like what you dream about. Yeah, yeah. Fooled, yeah. like this is the best so far. I mean, they're like, yeah, yeah. Close, good killing shots. No, yeah. I'm done. You're done. <laughs> Yowza. <laughs> and before you know it, lo and behold, the four of us bag our coveted limits of sandhill cranes. I'm happy. I could be happier. I could be happier if the limit was like six. Ribeye in the sky, all you can eat. It's been one of the funnest hunts I've ever had. Now, there's nothing left to do but pack up our zombie decoys and head back to Ed's to clean some birds. Shot a four-man limit today. Three or four? Mm-hmm. Not bad. All birds. Very happy. Best day. Last day, best day. We got a lot of birds to clean, man. I know we do. We got to get on it. To show my hosts my appreciation, I'm planning a crane cookout. Put a pile divider in there. Over the last few days, our group managed to bring down enough birds that it requires an assembly line styled crane cleaning party. Not bad, considering our piss poor start. Yeah, this one definitely was shot this morning. Besides this warm, look how the, everything just pulls right off of it so nicely. Anyway, that was my little lesson for the day. Thank you. Gutting with Ron. Gutting with Ron. I'm going to cook several different things with, with the cranes, but it sort of adds up to being one thing, which is kebabs. We're gonna do skewered hearts, and then crane breast cubed up on skewers. And then your typical looking kebab has got a bunch of vegetables on it. Is I wanna have all these on their own stick, because I wanna be able to control the cooking time. For instance, I like the vegetables to be soft, kind of charred, grill marks on them. That might take a little bit more time than the meat. I like the hearts to be just past rare. So when you cut into one of these crane hearts, it's not, it doesn't look red and bloody. It just got to the done thing. It should look kind of brown throughout, but still dripping. The crane meat, that I want it to be rare, rare, rare. If I'm using bamboo, I do this. Soak them in water. Soak them an hour or more. Soak them overnight, you know, if you got the time. Most people know that, some people don't, and they wonder why bamboo skewers always burn up in the grill. So when I skewer them, leave a little teeny bit of space. You want to get all the outside surfaces cooked and leave the inside very bloody. Warm is about right. These are Sandhill Crane Hearts. I've never served someone their first meal of game heart. I don't care if it's out of a bird or an animal or what, and have them not like it. Everyone has always liked it. It's just not something that should be wasted. And I'm going to do a couple of veggie skewers. Put soft stuff between hard, crispy things because it pinches it in there without messing it up. I base the hearts with what I call devil's butter, a mixture of melted butter, a touch of lemon, and cayenne pepper. For the crane breast, I just sprinkle them with salt and pepper and brush with plain melted butter. 
because the game meat is so lean, brushing it with oil or butter allows it to get a nice sear on the grill. That is beefy, though. It really is. Mm -hmm. Yep. Mm -hmm. We're joined by Tyler Bybee, one of the landowners who allowed us to hunt on his property. Have you ever eaten a crane heart before? I've never eaten a heart before. Oh. But you we hunted before? Oh, yeah. When I was a kid, we would chase them around. And like most kids out. chase, like, chipmunks. Do you guys yeah. chase cranes? Chase crane around. <laughs> <laughs> I don't care if you had a chef over to your house who's, like, a famous chef, and you gave him that and told him it was beef, he would never be like, no, it's not. No. Yeah. There's no other thing they're related to. Mm -mm. If you have to just say bird as a category, I've never had penguin. I'm, I'm guessing that this is the best bird. Well, man, that's a good bird. And it was a good trip. How was you guys? It was a ball. This, this, is, a, this, is, a, this is a hunting cheers because it's so quiet. It's a fine, fine batch of grub. Unforgettable, really. And I'm going home with plenty of crane breasts and drumsticks that will entice and inspire my friends and family around the dinner table. Next year, I hope to be back, a shotgun in my left hand, a dinner fork in my right. <laughs>